Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Tewksbury. I'm proud to be your host of In Your Corner. I, every week I like to introduce myself. I won the 100 meter backstroke at the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. I also won the 100 meter backstroke at the first World Out Games in 2006 in Montreal. I believe in inclusion in sport. I'm past chair of Special Olympics, which creates communities uh, that transcend through sport. And I also am a director of the Canadian Olympic Committee. And we're uh, also dedicated to making sport a safe space for all. Uh, so In Your Corner is a weekly virtual series on LGBTQI2S inclusion in sport and the effects of COVID-19 on sports communities. Please head to egal.ca slash In Your Corner for more information and to watch past episodes. There's some really good ones because we are already on week eight. I can hardly believe it. We just have two more. But I'm super excited about this week. Um, we do a pre-session meeting, of course, with my producers, Dennis and Jonathan, and we always are laughing at how there's a connection to every show. And this one is, is no different. I've got the winners of Amazing Race 2019, I think it was season seven, and such interesting um, people, I can't wait to talk to them and, and share their experience with you. But of course, John Montgomery, an Olympian from 2010, uh, was the host of that show. And a few episodes ago with Eric Radford, we did the history of LGBTQ2, uh, QI2S sport moments. And uh, Vancouver Pride House was one of them. And I have to say, those Olympics, when John won his gold medal, he was the only Olympian that came to Pride House in Vancouver. It was in Whistler. And it was just outside the official venues and uh, he came with this gold medal and his girlfriend he was a great ally and i'm really happy to see him hosting amazing race and doing such a great job uh, so we want to talk about physical activity and sport and also we want to also explore um what that means to people from that are, are uh, indigenous and to spirit and so just as I did last week with some definitions, it's important to know that two-spirit is an English umbrella term to reflect and restore indigenous traditions forcefully suppressed by colonization, honoring the fluid and diverse nature of gender and attraction and its connection to community and spirituality. It's used by some indigenous people rather than or in addition to identifying as LGBTQI. So to discuss this topic further, we've got, as I said, two terrific guests. Uh, we've got James McCocus and Anthony Johnson. So I'm going to read their bio together, and then we're going to bring them both on. It's so fun because they're a couple, and we usually get people on individually, and they have to wait awkwardly. So these guys are going to come on together. So Anthony and James met on Facebook, and at, after Anthony spotted James as a centerfold in Out Magazine, when the two met in person, sparks flew and they married in 2017. Who does not love a good love story? And you know I'm gonna explore that a little further. Anthony and James are both driven to be strong voices for their community and good role models. Anthony attended Harvard and holds a bachelor's degree in economics. His marriage to James and subsequent move to Alberta has given him a new lease on life. James has constantly dealt with the adversities in the medical industry related to being indigenous. He knew he wanted to be a doctor since the age of four and went through a grueling 13 years of training. He's now trying to break the racism that indigenous medical professionals face every day. Having grown up in similar communities, the commonalities in their lives really brought this pair together. They both want to show indigenous youth that they can be successful while also staying committed to their cultural and spiritual ways. So happy to welcome Anthony and James. Let's bring them on. Yay! Hello! So happy to have you both here. We're going to cover a lot of ground, so let's get started. I, I want to know that moment when sparks flew. So when did you actually meet each other in real life? And I'm so glad it was like a reciprocal, magical moment. <laughs> was it magical for you? <laughs> for you over us. There's there's layers to this story, so let me get into it. I like lasagna. So basically, I was like trying to figure out what two spirit means, and I had been traveling across the U.S. for years and asking people. And he was the first person who I had ever seen like actually linked. Like he was tagged in a post on Facebook, and I'm like, here's someone I could actually message because he was a centerfold in Out Magazine. And obviously, he's like really hot. So I was like, oh, like, who is that? But it was mostly this block quote about talking about two spiritedness. And so I reached out just to be like, hey, like, 
what is this? And because he's so good looking and a doctor, I just assumed that he was taken because like they always are, right? Like <laughs> and, and in the gay community, just always taken. So he wasn't. And then we just met, there was like rapid fire texting. And I think that was the thing where like the text weren't like, you know, five hours apart. It was like, <laughs> so <laughs> like, yeah, I knew. <laughs> and then he, we had a FaceTime on was in Fiji. Yeah, so how I ended up being in the magazine is I had been single for probably about a year out of a long-term relationship. And I was like, there's no one to date in this country. Like, no one <laughs> that has, like, the characteristics that I'm looking for, um, which apparently are very unique. But um, so this opportunity at the... And I'm like, time, I'm what you got. <laughs> <but those guys. laughs> Yes. Well, people are like, you're looking for a unicorn. So anyway, I was at the Montana Two Spirit Gathering, which happens every year in Montana, which is an amazing uh, place to go. And Out Magazine was there, and they needed people to be in this magazine. And I was like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And the best that could happen is maybe I'll meet someone that I would have never crossed paths with, paths with before. And I was actually in Australia doing a book launch for a chapter that I had written. And um, the, art, the article came out, and we happened to both be in the same Facebook group, which we never check. Thankfully, he checked it and messaged me. So on the way home, when I was going through Fiji, because I was like, let's stop in Fiji, um, we ended up FaceTiming for like three hours on the beach. Um, and he was in Brooklyn, and like, I think my computer died, and yours probably did, because we were talking for so long, and we just hit it off. Yeah. And oh. I do have a screenshot of the FaceTime though, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have such great chemistry together. I can see how that turned into three hours. Um, I'm curious though, Anthony, that that journey of two spirit discovery. What did you learn from that? What does what does two spirit mean to you? You know, that's a really complicated term because it is a made up word, and that's something that I've like finally realized that, is that it is made up but i think that the journey is really the thing that taught me the most because it's kind of like i'm just going to reference my bible eat pray love but you know <laughs> eat, pray, love, they're basically like you know if you decide to go on this journey and just accept everything as a sign then you could end up in a destination where you learn so much about yourself and that's what happened with me like you know i had grew up on the res i went to harvard i struggled with addiction I had so many issues with being gay. Like, I don't look like you, <laughs> which is like the pinnacle of gayness. You know what I mean? It's like a ripped white guy. And, um, and like, it's a, there was a lot of discovery about what it means to be gay, what it means to be self-expressed. But inside of that discovery, there was an exploration of ceremonial practices and being in ceremony and being around culture and being around all these different uh people and so yeah to me two discovery uh, two spirit means a discovery of self through a journey that's spiritual in nature and fully embracing whatever is revealed to you your gifts your positive attributes your negative attributes and fully living with those and being happy and excited about it well i can completely relate to that even though i may look like this I had a very similar journey of self-discovery of what it yeah. means to be gay, to be the fag in grade eight, to assimilate my own experience and figure out what it means within this broader culture that I, I envy in a sense that your culture has at least a place for tradition and this community within it. And what a rich discovery. For me, that community had to be ironically sport and the Olympic tradition, which sometimes was counter-inclusion, <laughs> to, to say the least. Um, but that's amazing. That's a, I, I think that's a, a wonderful journey. And I think that's actually a journey that many of us share within the LGBTQI2S community. It, it, different destinations and different communities we search through, but, um, but that journey. I think that's interesting, though, because, like, as I'm getting older, like, you know, the fact of the matter is, like, gay culture does idolize a certain type of person. And the more that I've become confident with who I am, I've talked to people who look like that, you know, and I talk to people who are that picture perfect image. And I haven't met a single person who doesn't say I didn't feel the same kind of pressure 
I don't feel like not good enough. And I'm like, you literally look like you are an Abercrombie and Fitch model. Like, how can you be saying that? But and look at you. Look at your energy. Look at your uh, enthusiasm. <laughs> look at your persona. I envy that. That to me speaks volumes about something. So, I mean, it's, 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 everyone has something, right? And we all maybe underestimate what we have and overestimate sometimes what others do. So how is how has the journey been in Canada um, versus the United States? <laughs> he complains <laughs> about how cold it is all the time. So I never realized in Alberta that winter is like a long time. He's like, it's eight months long. And I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, okay, October, November, December, January, February, March. Yeah, it can be. Kind of is. <laughs> um, you know, it's something that he reminds me of all the time. He hates the drivers here. Um, I don't hate them. I'm just like, <laughs> why is there a median here? Like, I can't see right now. Uh, but I mean, we have come to enjoy it. Yeah, I think you know. I think that you know, discovery in the U.S. was different for me because it was like me solo, and in Canada, I'm like married to an icon. So I get to be in spaces and places and around people who I might not normally be able to. And, you know, one of the reasons why we did the Amazing Race Canada is because I wanted to create for myself that moment of like, if you think about the first day of school or you think about college or like you're going somewhere new or like maybe you're, you know, it's your first day with a new coach or whatever and you like open the door and there's that feeling of nervousness and anxiety. I said, I want to create something like that for myself in this country that is kind of difficult to make friends. I think that Canadians definitely have a different socialization, uh, at least from where I live. You know, I've lived in San Francisco, New York, and Boston, and like I'm crazy, right? Like that's just how people are in those places. And I think Canadians are a little bit more reserved. So I wanted to create for myself that opportunity to like, open the door to the new school and walk in like with my trapper keeper and uh, meet cool people, which I'm doing right now. So it works. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, we just don't have the, the size of population. So we don't, we don't have the same city vibe and you, and here you are in Northern Alberta as well, which is a, you know, not, not the same kind of urban center you're used to. I was like, why didn't you tell me this is like the Arkansas of Canada? Like, <laughs> but that's where change happens, Anthony. That's where change happens. Like, hey, did you guys? Like, what's going on? <laughs> More trucks per capita, right? Yeah. Where did you, uh, did you guys get to take your trip before, before COVID hit? Thankfully we did. So we kind of have this routine every year where we go and visit Anthony's grandparents who live outside of Chicago who are almost in their 90s. Yeah. Um, so it's really important for us to go visit them at least once a year. And he then, really just goes for the Chicago premium outlets. Like, <laughs> well, Black Friday. Does <laughs> Black Friday. Black Friday shopping is awesome too. Uh, and then from there, we went to Japan, to Tokyo, to visit Anthony's relative who's in stationed there in the Navy. And, um, and then to different parts of Asia. So from there, we went to Thailand. Yeah, Thailand, uh, Cambodia, Cambodia, Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> In Hong Kong, yeah, and then back. Oh, okay. Back. Yeah, it's before, like January first, like before all of this happened. I didn't want to go. I was exhausted from last year. Like we were just like hard till literally the day before we left. Like busy, like busy, 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 busy. And I just wanted to sleep for like six weeks. <laughs> no, we need to go, and I'm glad we did because now we wouldn't have been able to go yeah. anywhere. And it oh. happened there. Mm. So Tokyo, of course, got taken off my list this year for the Olympics, and I was supposed to go to Singapore, and that got taken off too. So I'm listening to you name all your cities and countries. Good for you. It was amazing how they had everything set up, like in preparation for the Olympics, and you know, just yeah. like at every crosswalk, a crossing guard, <laughs> even if there's no traffic, like it was so safe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Okay, well. Let's let's bridge there. And I, I'm I'm so um, I know you guys love physical fitness and exercise and what a beautiful romantic. Let's what what was your uh, saying? I do at 32, like who, uh, on a marathon. But just talk to me first about the the role that sports played in your relationship. Yeah. So 
it's actually played quite a bit. So, you know, that we got married during the 2017 Vancouver Marathon, where our slogan was, we said I do at Cam 32. Um, and there it is. And that was a, a really amazing because one, to complete a marathon is a lot of intense training. And that was Anthony's first marathon. So on top of like getting married, he completed his first marathon, which is a huge accomplishment for any person. So I was super proud of him for doing that. Obviously it wasn't our PB since we stopped for like 45 minutes, which we're hoping to be like maybe 15. But um, yeah, our wedding took a little longer than we had hoped for. I'm like, <laughs> you didn't want to rush too much. That's terrible. <laughs> I think that, you know, I think that for us, you know, because running is a sport, but um, growing up on the reservation, at least for me, the outdoors wasn't, it's not like the outdoors. It was just outside, like where you go. And I grew up in a place called Kayenta, which is 30 minutes south of Monument Valley, Utah, which a reference point is like the place where Forrest Gump turns around. And he's like, oh, I think I've been running now. Like, that's where I grew up. So I grew up in the wild west of sweeping vistas. And it was just like going for a hike on a mountain and being the only one there, you know, riding a mountain bike in the middle of nowhere and being the only one there. So we've been able to do so many amazing things. Like, you know, we've hiked in the Arctic Circle. We've hiked in the Grand Canyon. You know, we were supposed to do the West Coast Trail. Like we're always on the land being outdoorsy but like in really like hardcore ways, like we just we will go for like 50 miles, mm. you know, whereas most people will be like, oh, I did a three mile hike, I'm tired. And we're like, oh, that's warm up. Like, you know, <laughs> here the Skyline Trail in Jasper, which is like how many, like 32 miles in the mountains. It was 54 kilometers up, you know, up mountain passes. Yeah, so wow. you this. But I think for me, so like I started doing marathons in 2002, I believe, and I, for, it, I've always had a lot of female role models. So, um, you know, women who were doing marathons and then they were doing ultra marathons. And then around that time, I think Oprah did a marathon. And I was like, well, I always want to do something every year for my own personal growth and development. That makes me a better person in some way. So I started doing that then and I've continued that now. Um, and now we're doing ultra marathon trail running, which is like uh, races more than 50 kilometers. So I've done up to a hundred and... I think 20, over 100 kilometers. I don't even so know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But part, of, now. <laughs> but part of that is like, you know, really tapping into and realizing the potential of our own genetics as Indigenous people that, you know, like Anthony said, I don't think I'll ever be like a ripped, huge guy. And that's, you know, that's something I aspired to as like a young gay that everyone is kind of working towards that ideal. But I, I was at some point I was like, well, I might not be that, but um, I can do endurance sports because that's in our genetics as Nehio or Cree people. And it's something that allows us to connect to the land. Um, it, it's very, comes in very handy because we pick a lot of medicines in the summertime um, that are Cree medicine. So sometimes it's like super far to go someplace in the mountains. And like when you trail run, you can just, okay, well, I'm going to go run and get that medicine. Or it, it makes things more obtainable. We can do things in a day that takes people like, you know, five to seven days of, of camping. And I love doing it with him because we get to be outside in the winter. Like, winter is beautiful at night. It's so still. There's yeah. a stillness and a clarity that no one is outside. You get to see the most beautiful things in the bush and it's a really spiritual experience and i wish more people would um you know get outside and get out into the bush because there's so many teachings and that you can learn there yeah it's I also for like love that. you guys have totally inspired me i'm starting talking over here. i'm so like yes what can we do in the winter go out at night when it's quiet it's so still i totally agree and you even get the beautiful crunch sometimes of the snow and that Christmas of the year. Yeah, thank you. You just inspired me. Sorry, uh, Anthony, floor's yours. I just had to jump in there. You just have to dress right because it could be like you could get minus cold 42. Easy. Yeah, your lungs won't freeze. People are always like, don't your, don't your lungs freeze? No, they don't. I was kind of thrilling. It's almost like intoxicating when it's that cold. Mm -hmm. All I was going to say is that like working out or like 
and it's not just working out because it's not like being at the gym doesn't produce the same thing. But when you're running or being active together as a couple, I find that we really have productive conversations in those times. Like we're able to like work through issues and like his brain, he'll come back from a run and be like, oh my God, like I figured out this problem. And so a lot of times when we're running or doing things, we're like actual, we're, ha we're having like couple conversations while we're being active. And I think there's something biologically that preps your brain to be in a different space because there's elements like team that are involved. There's elements of like perseverance. Your brain is just producing more endorphins and being yeah. Your heart is pumping, your heart is pumping, no. you're feeling it, totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so lucky that you both share that. I'm lucky in my own life that my partner loves it because it's A, it's harder to do on your own, and mm -hmm. B, it, it like you guys are just showing you're such a, you're just like the amazing couple. They should do, it's a sub spin off <laughs> of the amazing race called the amazing couple. But uh, yeah, you're so amazing space <laughs> Marilyn Bennett. You can watch it. I'm like, you should have heard us before the call started. But, <laughs> but you're showing all the beautiful, you know, byproducts and the multipliers that happen when you add on conversation with some exercise together stillness and clarity at night you know like it's beautiful and and so that's really at the end of, we're going to head into some pretty tough times ahead and i think it's really good to hear winter can be very beautiful and be reminded of that because i agree um so just uh, you guys are so inspiring um so accomplished tell me what else you're doing in your community i want to sort of promote some of the good work that you're doing he just got a new job, which is exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just started at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health at Shkabe Mahwa, which in Ojibwe or the Anishinaabe language means helper bear. And I'm the first huh. medical director in the history of CAMH, which I think is a bit crazy. Like there definitely needs to be more of those doors open and walls broken down. Um, and we do a lot of work around cultural preservation and rebuilding the Cree health system. So one of Anthony's job, well, you, why don't you explain what you're doing in Cuban? Um, so my job is actually revitalizing traditional Cree midwifery. So I like work with others to redevelop ceremonial practices, songs, picking medicines on the land. Um, and so as an extension of that, one of the things we realize, because we work in the same community as well, um, one of the things we realized is that there aren't physical spaces in many indigenous communities, most indigenous communities, there aren't physical spaces that are specifically geared toward cultural practice and being community. And so while we were on The Amazing Race Canada, like we knew we won before the show aired because we knew. And so we, to, uh, we did a fundraiser where we've successfully raised $100,000 to build a physical space. We're still 150,000 short of our goal. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's been, it was a lot of work, but it's rewarding to know that we could actually use our exposure to do something good. Um, and we just do lots of ceremonial things at our house and community building. James and his job is actually helping to develop like a two-spirit rites of passage. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of indigenous communities, like two-spirit youth are ostracized or pushed out of the circle because of colonization, because of historical trauma. And so James's vision is to create the space where two-spirit youth can actually become the young men and women. And even if they've transitioned, the young people they want to be, mm -hmm. Um, and have the support to do that in a culturally safe environment. Amazing. Well, so you're just, you're taking the, you're raising the bar again because you're already doing such amazing stuff in the community before this promotion. So, oh, very inspiring. Um, you know, I, I actually did a show about that journey that I, I was speaking to you earlier that there's a similarity and it was called Belong. And at the end of the day, <laughs> That's that's the journey we're looking for, right? That space where we can just be ourselves, be included. I found in my own journey that had to actually come from within. And I had to redefine in my own head what gay meant. Uh, growing up in Alberta, um, you can imagine at that time, <laughs> it was a different world. Um, but that that led to a pathway where 
wherever I went, I felt like I was there and it led to authenticity over time. I just want to acknowledge you, Mark, because, you know, as a young person growing up in Alberta, there was so few people that we could look to on the media that was from the GLBT community. And you were one person that I was always like, okay, well, there's Mark Tewksbury. Like, he's so cool. You were on CTV. You were a news anchor. Like, I think there was you and Sven Robinson. And like, that, that was it. So I just want to acknowledge you and thank you because I know it can be difficult to be, like, the first one. And maybe you weren't the first one, but I think to many young people, um, you know, we really looked up to you. So it's so surreal to be here talking with you um, tonight. So James, <laughs> James, oh my God. Thank you. That means the world to me because I admire you both. I just love that you've been so conscious and intentional with your representation and to use the platform to advance all kinds of super positive issues and 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 being such great role models so keep it up i'm just like yeah. tell me all the fun you had <laughs> <laughs> oh you know what i'm gonna get you a copy of my book inside out it's a little, it's a little bit juicy I, the, version. <laughs> I know you do that's for a dinner party uh, you're gonna bring the worst you're gonna bring the worst out of me i can tell already <laughs> which is the best Oh, I just noticed Tina Bogner's comment about fat tire biking. Like we just bought fat tire bikes last winter and it's so awesome to be out on the trail. Although we have found that because it's so frozen, like you definitely need a soft seat. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's a very good byproduct you didn't think of maybe before. Somebody asked, else asked earlier, I think we covered it, but just um, any big difference between um, living 2S in Canada versus the United States? Um, I, I feel like, uh, I always kind of feel a bit, I don't want to say scared, but like when you go to certain parts of the state, I think it's definitely palpable. Um, you know, maybe not some of the openness that I feel I can be here in my own territory, you know, and definitely as a Nehyo person on like Treaty Number Six, our own territory, I definitely feel safer. Um, I don't know what your experience is. Uh, just continue to criticize my home nation. Like, <laughs> you <public>. definitely <laughs> feel the same way too. I feel it now that he said it. He's like, if you look at traffic in the US, it's 10 times more everywhere you go. And I was like, oh my God, it is. Um, you know, I would say that like the two-spirit experience, I can't speak for everyone because I've only had my own experience, but you know, it's similar. There's the same level of homophobia. There's the same, you know, history with colonization. There are a lot of people who face some really tough things in the US and there's a different experience of the toughness here in Canada of communities in Canada are more rural just because Canada is like a large land base with few urban sectors. Um, and so I think it could be a little more challenging for people in that regard, just because it's like a small community in the middle of nowhere, but like actually in the middle of nowhere where you have to like fly in, right? Like you don't really have that in the US. Like you could get everywhere driving. I think it's easier for people to leave if they don't feel safe, um, but it's equally bad. And I think it's, you know, it's sad. It's sad that that's the case. Uh, Anthony's spoken like somebody who's really experienced that in the middle of nowhere. That was very good. Oh, no. <laughs> but we that's a good insight. Good. That's a really good insight. I think that's so true. And sometimes the more, more remote you are, the more isolated and more challenging it is. I have to wrap up, but I before I do, I want to ask, each of you, I'm going to put you on the spot. We like to end an episode with our guests or people who are watching, thinking of sort of one or two words that sort of summarizes your experience and your feeling of this episode. And I'm going to start, so I give you a few seconds to buy some time. Um, beyond, I'm going to cheat because I'm going to do a few. I, beyond amazing couple, huh? I'm going to say winter beauty. You really inspired me. So who's next? Oh, apparently you need to buy cycling tights is my word. Oh, for winter cycling. <laughs> she just got some cycling tights. Cycling that's tights, a that's a good one. <laughs> words. 
to I think that I would say friendship because I feel like we're going to be friends. You're going to like, you're going to hang out in Calgary. You're going to give us the unedited version of <laughs> your book. Um, but also I feel really excited because I think that as an indigenous person, you could often feel isolated from the outside world. Like we spend so much time around indigenous people that it's been like refreshing. I'll say refreshing to talk oh. to a new person and also for everyone to be part of this. Yeah. And friendship I, is so beautiful. Thank you for that word. I'm like touched really. And I can see it happening. Uh, I think mine, I just have gratitude that we're able to talk about something that's really important to us because physical activity is such a huge part of our life in terms of how we maintain balance and spirituality and connection with the outdoors. Um, so thank you for giving us this opportunity to talk about one of our passions. Oh, and, and thanks for showing us like just the multiple benefits of of doing things together and getting outside, even in the heart of the darkness of winter. Okay, thanks so much. I'll see you soon. I have a feeling really soon. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Wow. Well, that was really a fun episode tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out egal.ca slash in your corner when you can always find past episodes. Um, I want to thank again, Anthony and James, uh, Anthony Johnson and James McCocus for joining us today, giving us some insight, in, insight into Two Spirit, but also into the really important role that sport plays in relationships and in keeping us healthy through these times. I know that I'm going to maybe even put on my jacket right now and go for a walk outside in that still winter air. Two more episodes to go. I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Mark Tewksbury for a gals in your corner. <laughs>